yo, what are you doing right now? Whatever you're doing, let me ask you, do you feel broken, confused by religion, haunted by your past, unsure of your purpose? Do you want to know more about God's truth and his plan for you? (laughs) Guess what? So do we. You're not alone. So let's hang out. Let's get real about who Jesus is and who we are as men. We're going to listen to Jeremy, Trey, Michael, and Brad break it down. These guys call themselves the Cussing Christians. All right, guys, I'm turning it over to you. What is going on? Amazing intro, Brad. Thank you. And we are the Cussing Christians. And uh, we're yeah. glad you're joining us from wherever you are. And uh, we're getting, we're going to get on the topic in just a minute. But uh, we, we've got uh, Donna and I are babysitting a couple of kids, right? And I'm just going to stop there. But uh, one of the kids has that virtual thing that mm-hmm. goes over your eyes, you know, with mm-hmm. the, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Hell yeah. Right? <laughs> and she's 11. I want one. All right. Well, <laughs> That's so cool. Well, anyway, it was, it was, when, it was Wednesday night. About- we had a small group at our house and the kids were there and and it was I'll just say it was GT's wife I said hey can I look in that thing and she goes sure and she goes what, what am I looking at she goes well you're in you're in a meeting room and she said a meeting room yeah but it's a safe room I'm like what are you talking and so she put it up put it on and sure enough you're you're walking around and you're in a room like you're you know this and there's a hot dog sitting on the couch of course and GT's <laughs> wife goes there's a hot dog and the hot dog said I'm not a hot dog my name is Frank. <laughs> it, was, oh, no. it was actually somebody there and it scared the crap out of me. I'm going, there's no way my 11 year old daughter would be, no should way. be doing that. I mean, that, you know, I'm. How old are you, Frank? How old are you, Frank? Uh, you know, I can't remember what the person's name was, but GT's wife it freaked her out. She goes, I'm sitting there walking in this virtual reality and. Mm, food's talking to you? Boom. Wow. There's, a, there's a hot dog. Well, I'm not a hot dog. I'm. Wow. That's going to freak you out. I mean, with new technology, I mean, that's the stuff we got to figure out, right? I mean, like when I was a kid, I remember we got, you know, that's when the internet really first got popular with AOL and this and that. And we used to, we talked about it when we did the episode on porn. Right. We used to like trade the porn pictures on, uh, uh, on AOL. And it was like, yeah. send me a pic, I'll send you a pic. And yeah, then, yeah. You know, of course, one of my buddies got caught printing them off at like one in the morning. <laughs> he got us all busted. <laughs> Which, for, you know, back then, that was like, when they took them away, it was like three or four floppy disks. Oh, that, you know? uh, <laughs> more floppy for long. Uh, man, said the technology and where we're going Words into too. this virtual realm and the weirdness of it, it kind of spooks me out. Yeah, it's, especially as a parent. And for me, I mean, your kids are grown at this point. Oh, so the grandkids are about their problem, right? Grandkids but, are coming someday. I mean, not a, hopefully nine times soon. Yeah, fortunately, I mean, I, I try to stay abreast of it, but like, how do you stay in front of it? At some point, like, they're going to get past you, you know, or right. by the time you catch it, it's a little bit late, which is kind of scary, but you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, th- I think the virtual reality would be a lot of fun, but I, it, I, I mean, it, it is cool. I played a couple of games on it and it's pretty mind blowing. It, it is cool, but that little room where yeah, lock it down, a kid will go to sit and there's other people and you know, you can make yourself look however you want to look and yeah, you man. don't know who's in there with you, man. Well, that's like uh, they have Roblox and they got um, what is it? Roblox. Uh, they got uh, Minecraft, Minecraft. And all these games that like Hunter and them are playing now. And like we put the restrictions to where he can't talk or uh, type to each other. So his friends and they now get on their iPads and they'll actually FaceTime as a group like chat. Mm-hmm. They right. FaceTime on their iPads. Well, at least you can see who that is. Yeah. But, but that way we know who he's with. Right. Otherwise, it could be whoever. What's going to stop the hot dog from asking for her address or I, I her know. phone number? Eleven year old kid. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that that that's yeah. what was concerning to me. I was are there wow. any pre yeah. blocks in that thing? Yeah. Uh, there, there are plenty. I don't know anything about them. I don't own one of those. There, there are, but you and, know, and it's very. Uh, you have to make your decision. Right? Yeah, I mean, you, you gotta can make actually have it played to where you can watch them play it on TV, uh-huh. so you can actually watch what's going on right. in the room, right? And you're part of it, so that's where you have to make sure as a family, you know, if you're going to let mm-hmm. them do that. In my opinion, well, you it's teach like, your kids if food starts talking to you, run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just don't, yeah. don't talk to food, man. Talk yeah, I, um, I was talking to a friend of ours. Um, Especially I was named Frank. <laughs> you know what? One of our one of our cornerstone you know, charities is you know anti porn and anti trafficking organizations. And we have we have a couple here locally. And I actually had lunch with her yesterday and told her that story. And her eyes got this big around and said, "We got to talk." That's exactly where the traffickers are going now. VR. It, you yeah. know, in it, virtual reality. It, it, that's where they're going. And and it, it used to be an email typing up, pretending you're an identity. Now you can just make yourself look whatever, and you sound cool and you're part of this realm and boom you know and how far will that go right especially right. with the black uh, web or whatever is mm-hmm. dark, dark web stuff they can do there yeah yeah man 
man. Well, I'm, we we're just we're glad you joined us for the Custom Christians this week. We uh, there's something that's really on our hearts that we were we were wanting to address today, and I, I know that every man out there that is a Christian man, this has probably come to your mind at some point the past few years. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple of Bible verses just to kind of set us up and uh, and a thought and then we're gonna we're gonna free flow around the room and we got a couple of stories that are going to be told and a couple of analogies that will be uh, spoken of as Paul writes in Romans 12 he says I appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship his next words, do not be conformed to this world. The world today seems to be closing in and pointing a finger at the Christian mindset, pointing a finger of accept this. If not, you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're an extremist, you're a homophobe, whatever, mm-hmm. what, whatever it is. When we go to 2 Timothy and, and read in 2 Timothy 3, it's just so indicative of our world today. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, they'll be lovers of money, they'll be proud and arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Can we look around and see how that's happening and people trying to convince us that, oh, this is okay. Just a little bit never hurt anybody. Or, you know what? My 11-year-old says she's not who she was born as. Or, and you know what? That's okay. I'm going to let her get through this. And, you know, if she wants to believe she's something else, then let's let's do it. Or I look at how the past two years, I've had it jammed down my throat about the 700,000 deaths attributed to COVID, which is horrible. But no one's mentioned that last year there were 900,000 abortions that happened. You know, we got a whole unquote shit show of stuff that's being poured on us as Christian men, Christians in general trying to conform us and conforming means to bind. I mean, you know, the next sentence out of Paul's mouth is to be transformed by the renewal of your mind through the Holy Spirit. But being conformed into something is a binding thing. And I just feel like we're getting bombarded with these things that the world says is okay now, but they don't line up at all with what's in this book. So that's my setup today. And I I yield to you guys. I know you've got a lot of thoughts on this stuff. So, you know, it goes back to the scripture. It says right will be wrong and wrong will be right. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. There's no freedom of speech anymore. Mm -hmm. It's cancel culture. If you say anything that doesn't line up with a particular agenda today, canceled, you're, you know, or if I did something 15 years ago and it comes out today, I'm canceled. Um, there's no freedom of speech anymore. And, and it's saddening because what happened? Where did this happen? Where did this all start? And how has it become so strong that we are pushing this down the throats of everyone? Mm-hmm. And I don't just mean Christians. I mean, it's in, in either you agree or you don't agree. Right. I mean, I think it came with technology, right? I mean, the, the Internet's the worst thing that's ever happened to us. I mean, from that perspective. I mean, it's great because we have free flowing you know, information. I can reach you, cell phone. I mean, I have so much access at my fingertips right mm-hmm. now through my cell phone and through the Internet and technology that we never had before. For, which is a beautiful gift from God, but it's also a really cool tool for Satan, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a cool thing for him to play with and a cool way to twist us, right? Um, and I'm not just talking about our cell phones. I'm talking about the fact that I can send a tweet out and reach a million people yeah. in one second. Let that sink in a second, right? Like, right. how long would it have taken you 30 years ago to reach a million people? Months. Months? I mean, maybe you'd get a television show that had a million views, but even 30 years ago, I mean, I remember the, the little antenna thing at our house. I don't know if we ever used it, but we only had like 20 channels channels when we had cable. So I can't imagine you could reach that many people all at once that easily, you know? Well, the scary thing is if you could reach that many people and you're having an emotional day for whatever reason, and you just decide to go off on a tangent, a million people are going to hear it. Yeah. And so I, I feel mm-hmm. like, like with the media, that's a percentage of the population. There's not that many people in the media, but those few voices are, are influencing millions and millions. And so you get this idea, well, everybody must believe this. Um, and some people are being influenced. But I think overall, the general population, they don't believe a lot of this stuff. But you see it on the website. You hear it, you know, um, on air. 
Mm-hmm. And you think, well, this must be the way it is now, or, or mm-hmm. they're trying to make me believe this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's a small minority of the people that are that are pushing that stuff out. Right. Oh, it's the algorithms. I mean, these people are smart. They know. They, they know. know exactly what they're doing. I want to get on top of the. Uh, uh, what did you just say? Algorithm. Algorithm. Mm-hmm. I want to get on top of that and get a few more viewers. Yeah. For our listeners. For us. That'd be great. We yeah. got to work on our hashtags. We got to work on our hashtags. I'm telling you. Dude, I'm on head. I'll also tell you. I work with you on the hashtags. We got to do it. Every single thing's got to have hashtags. That's how you get in the algorithm. Well, cool. But um, it, it's but think about it from the other side too, right? Not just trying to reach you, right? But what happens to the people? And let's talk teenagers for a second, right? You go to high school. All of a sudden, you don't conform to what they're telling you should be like in high school, right? Right, and all of a sudden you're getting blown up on Instagram, TikTok. There's videos coming out making fun of you, and it's now you know now this teenager that's already the most awkward part of their life, and you know either has to conform and become part of that group that's causing that pain for that other person, or stand up against it and then become the person that's now getting made fun of in the center of attention. Right. And we wonder why all of a sudden now they're in front of millions because they know it's not just their school. Because all of a sudden that video becomes trending. Maybe it becomes trending because people are speaking out about how cruel. That group is to that kid, but they're still now in front of a million people in an embarrassing way hmm. or millions, right? We're talking about hundreds of millions sometimes. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so for all of you at home, apparently I tap the table. You do. Right? She got the table, table tap. I use my fingertips. <laughs> so, so, like, and our, and our pre, we have a pre-production meeting. We talked about Tim's. Our, we talked about Jeremy's uh, tapping of the there table and Tim uh, uh, getting crazy with it. But then, but this, <laughs> so back on that, that though, then, then we look at like teen suicide rate, substance abuse, addiction. They isolate themselves so much. They'll go into the room and disappear in you know, when when I was a kid, man, it was like get my six friend. You knew where everybody was because you saw all the bicycles in the driveway right. or in the front yard, right? Absolutely. That ain't happening anymore. Hmm. You know, for the most part. And yeah, these kids get in and they isolate. And, and it's no wonder that the young person's suicide rates what? are going up or the depression rates are going up or whatever. What recourse do these kids have? They don't. They're getting talked about or a TikTok video or. It's too, it's too late. Yeah. It's done. It's done. It's so out once there. Once it hits the internet, it's over. What can you do? You can't pull it back. No. It, it doesn't. Once it's on the internet, it's forever. Right. Whatever it is. Right. It's crazy, right? Yeah. But then take it past the kid, though. Take it to the adult that's already isolated, right? That doesn't want to conform or doesn't feel that way or doesn't want to be that way. I mean, as adults, we're lonely, actually. We're around way less people hmm. that actually have, you know, that, I mean, think about it. your day. How many people are you actually around in your day, right? And now you're stuck in this this house to now feel that that's the way you should be, whatever that is. Hmm. We, we had a thing at work a few years ago where they were having, I don't know what it was, National Pride Month or Pride Week or whatever it was. And so on a certain day, they said, wear purple to celebrate pride, you know, the, the LGBTQ thing. And so I thought, well, if I don't wear purple, are people going to label me like a homophobe or something? You know, that, that's a very subtle but real pressure that, that we feel. Um, and so it, it, you know, it came and went and a lot of people wore purple, a lot of people didn't. But that kind of thing is, is becoming increasingly more common. So as Christians, it's like, do I feel obligated to stand up and say, I'm not going to come out and be like, that's wrong. That's, a, that's, a, that's an abomination. Um, I felt like I was just supposed to, I don't know, prayerfully um, just be prayerful about it, but but not necessarily. I don't know. I mean, there, there, I think there's a time to stand up and confront something where truth is being attacked. And then there's a time to, to sit back and pray and just ask God, what's wisdom right. in this situation? Um, how do you want me to handle this? But right. what you're saying, Trey, is that there's more and more of that type of thing coming against us. Yeah. And, you know, as the Christians that we're supposed to extend grace and, and all of that, which we do and we love. And, but when it definitely defies and goes against what, what, what we hold on true and dear is the words of this book, when is it okay to step up and say, you know, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to wear that tomorrow because, and here's why. Mm -hmm. And I hope you can respect that. You know, I, I I think I've told you all the story a few years back of um, the guy, uh, the brother at the rescue mission that came up to me and confronted me uh, and he was a gay man and we had a great conversation. And I, I looked at him and I said, look, man, you guys are brilliant. You've taken the symbol that God, the promise, he would yeah. never destroy the world again. That's a, the rainbow is from God. And every time I see one now, you guys kind of creep into my brain a little bit. Mm. And that kind of bothers me, mm-hmm. you know. But when you, when you creep into my brain, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that 
you come out of the darkness, you see the light. Right. And, and, but but and, reframe that though. It's not. It's not you guys. It's Satan. It's, and, uh, it's sin, right? It, it's, it is sin. You're right. And it's not that person is still the same broken, sinful human that Michael Thomas was. Right. That Brad was. That you <laughs> were. That I was. That exactly. Mark, who preaches at our church, is yep. or was. They're, they're the same person. Exactly. Before they find Christ. Right. And so that, that's Satan that's making that rainbow right into what you're talking about. And I, I, you know, I, I, I went on with him and I said, so, you know, what, what's your identity? Who are you? Mm-hmm. Whoever has made that symbol something that you guys rally behind, that's great. But is that what, is that who you are? Are, are we children of God? And he kind of nodded at me. So I never really heard it like that before. And, and he's gone on and moved on from the rescue mission and doing well, I guess. But it was just an interesting conversation. A relative of mine had a friend that, you know, this relative of mine met this guy every week, the same time at the same place to finish the week off. And they were sitting there talking and this friend of my relative said, he goes, man, are you okay? And he goes, man, I don't, I don't know what to say. And he said, what? And he goes, my daughter just told me I can't call her a she anymore. Mm-hmm. I got an 11 year old daughter that telling me I can't call her a she anymore. I can't refer to her as her. What am I supposed to do with that as a parent? Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to do with that at the school that is standing behind her? Mm-hmm. And he was broken hearted, you know, it, 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 it really bothered him. And um, I just said, dude, we, we got to pray through this and ask her real questions right. about why are you saying this and, you know, what's being what's being forced that, see, that's, fed that's, down that's the where throats. A lot of these kids are being influenced, again, by social media and, and by media and all that kind of stuff. You know, five, ten years ago, there was so much less of it. Mm. Are there more people now that are really being born that way or are people it's 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 promoted so much that right. kids are starting to go, well, OK. It's like it's like Satan. It was like Satan got tired of just dealing with with adultery and stealing and then alcoholism and and just said, you know what? I'm going to start attacking the young people now. And I'm going to make them question who they, were you really born that way? Right. You know, I don't know. I mean, we've turning up the heat. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we've always had very open conversations with our kids when they were younger. Fortunately, before any of that can't really started hitting them, but we had lots of discussions with them about that kind of thing before they got to that. So they, they have friends now that, that are, um, I guess, exploring that or, or thinking that they're that way. Right. Um, but, but because we've spent so much time talking to them about it, I feel like it's helping them process it right. through a godly lens instead of saying, well, you know, maybe I'm that way too. But you don't hear about the negativity of, of that, of the downside of it. None of it. You don't hear any of it. Right. There's, there's no negativity behind that. Mm. It's all okay. Mm. But there is, it's destroying people's lives. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just the world of sin that we live in. And, um, you there's know, a lot, I, I'm, it's really touchy and tough to talk about. Mm-hmm. But well, there's a lot of, I mean, again, it's not just that's one of the 613, right? Like either one, like pick one. But there's other there's other things out there in the world today that are just as bad. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm on TikTok and I scroll through TikTok and every once in a while I get these upside down, down pineapples. And it's like showing like couples how they like pimp out their husband or they find a girlfriend for their a husband what? for the night. Like the upside down pineapple. Dude, that's the dude, swinger right, symbol. Yeah. You just, you just hit me with something I didn't know. That's weird. Yeah, if you're in a so if you're in the grocery store and you're a swinger, you can put an upside down pineapple in your cart, and that symbolizes the other swingers to come. I just bought you. two pineapples, dude. and now you're making me think. Yeah, I'm have freaking them out, down dude. Or not. I'm just the right side thing. I don't. I, I was taught it by someone. I'm now teaching you. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's a <good> thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, pineapples right side up. Yeah, yeah make sure you keep those pineapples like right side up. It, so it matters. It does uh, apparently. Um, <laughs> God, that's crazy. I don't make the rules guys so um but there's these sites now that, that promote non-monogamy there's people now that are, will be married I and mean, i was watching below deck um which is a tv show in bravo and one of the guys on the show is open about the fact that he's engaged to a woman but they don't practice monogamy that's not a thing like that's a sin you're supposed you're not supposed to be non-monogamous you know sex before marriage like it's okay hmm. like we're talking about you know several other things here but sex before marriage is is acceptable. I mean, what when I was in college, like me even staying over at your girlfriend's house was a big deal, right? More or less, like when the parents were in town, like we stayed at our own apartments. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We weren't allowed to do that. Nowadays, it's invited into the house in right. high school and things like that. I mean, what about? Um, you just need. There's six hundred. <laughs> there's so many things that are wrong that the world allows in. I mean, think about the the music that's being pushed now. What, when was it acceptable to talk about treating women the way that these guys talk about treating women? In some of these songs now, right. or the women that 
that now talk about how they want to do those things with men, right? Or mm-hmm. drugs. I mean, listen, there's a whole culture out there around this, uh, you know, EDM and these concerts that these guys go to that they, these are professionals that all week are doing what I do. They wear suits and ties and, but all weekend they take drugs and ecstasy and Coke and do whatever they want. And then for actual just pleasure, because these things make your pleasure sensors overload, right? I had a girl that went missing from one of my offices a couple of years ago. We couldn't find her. We knew she went to this concert and couldn't find her. She overdosed on some of the whatever drugs they were doing. Hmm. She showed up a week and a half later, you know, having been in the hospital and all these things. And But then, what, I don't know, two months later, they're back at the concerts again because that's what they do, right? Wow. And these things are all very common. And, you know, the, the song of the year was uh, that song, WAP. If hmm. you don't know what that is, look it up. I'm not going to say it on the show. Yeah. But it's, uh, I mean, talk, think about what that song was about. I right. Mean, but yet we're cool with it, right? Right. And it's being pushed down your throat. Talk out about that. Abortion. Yeah. What about that? You said that earlier, right? Right. I mean, <laughs> you can you can abort a child up until it is coming out of the womb. They turn it around and do the god awful things to that child. But then there's no consequences for that. But then you hit a pregnant woman with your car after you've had a few drinks. You're not only getting murder or you know manslaughter for her, but also for her unborn child. Yeah. Think of the logic behind that. Yeah. Does that make yeah. any sense? No, it does not. There you go. And, you know, when they talk about murder, you know, when they're they're talking about murder and killing people, God's not just talking about physically. He's talking about mentally and talking about attacking them and murdering them and their souls and their bodies, right? But not just their physical body, right? Right. But then we have politicians. Think about what we see on Fox News. You see on CNN. You see on every channel now where the the things they're saying to murder the person across them, not physically, but socially, you know, politically, whatever the case might be. That's still a sin, right? And it's, but now it's cool. Let me go get my, let's go brand insured now so I can, you know, attempt to murder you know, Biden or hurt him in some way. That's not cool either, right? right. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not trying to no, bring good politics point. into the game, but. Well, no, but I, I, there's a good point to that. When I ran for uh, public office back in my hometown, I had some information about my candidate that I knew was true that would have blown up his, but I didn't say, it wasn't up to me. Hmm. I didn't say a word because it wasn't about that. It would have destroyed so many people if that would have came out and i truly believe your sin will find you out yeah sooner or later it ain't up to me no Mm-mm. right and so and i could have brought that out at that time yeah. and probably won the election but i didn't mm-hmm. and i lost mm-hmm. so it isn't up to me well wow. yeah it'll definitely find you out you just talked about lovers of pleasure um and you know that that's from the first timothy i, I looked up a little article you know and those verses i read um one two three four five verses there's 25 key points in those verses i don't want to go through all of them but i just wanted to you know far first off people will be lovers of themselves self you know self was first perpetrated when it was said in genesis i'm not my brother's keeper right you know hmm. self was first perpetrated when you know when adam said go ahead it's not that bad take that bite it's not it's gonna make you better go for it we're right there yeah and it's just indicative covetousness it's in timothy 3 2 we're boasters we're proud blasphemers people will be blasphemers people will be disobedient to parents oh my gosh that's crazy today. Unthankful. People will consider nothing as sacred, unloving, unforgiving, slandering others. Hmm. How key is that today? We, we feel like we have a license to do it, especially public figures. And I can write it on a piece of paper or on a, on a, on a meme or on a Facebook social media page. And I'm an expert immediately. <laughs> right. I can do it. Yeah. Well, it's almost, I mean, talking about being forced upon you. I mean, it's if you don't pick a side... Mm-hmm. And I mean, you're, you almost feel obligated in, in some ways to jump on that bandwagon and, and join in that activity. Right. And that's right. what we're talking about here, right? Is like the world saying you should be part of this, conform to this part of this activity, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And those activities being sin. Well, right? and there's, there's error on both sides. A hundred percent. So what do we do about that? Like, what are you supposed to do? Are there consequences for any of that behavior anymore? I mean, we I sit there and see things. This person does this, this person does that. And it's like there's no consequences for their behavior. So when I hear about the Lord says, the vengeance is mine. And you want to go, okay, take a little out of that. And, you know, you're you're wanting to see vengeance happen. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't. And it's like, it's the consequences for people's behavior are not being prosecuted or not, you know, whatever. It, you know, it just, it makes me so angry to see it. But I can't dwell on it. Because it isn't my responsibility, it's the Lord's. And when I 
when I free myself from that, I'm able to walk around a little bit easier than, and that's one of the things I've separated myself from a lot of um, news and stuff like that, because I can't do it anymore. I just, I would get so stinking angry about it. Mm -hmm. And it was causing a a problem with my walk. And and, um, it just, it becomes a religion when you when you let it overwhelm you like that. Yeah. Well, I was just looking at uh, 2 Timothy 2.23. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And that's what social media, I, I mean, most yeah. of what I see on that, that's what it is. They're, they're just stupid arguments about things. Um, opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, which is what we should want, right, for everyone, that they would come to repentance and the knowledge of, of God. So, you know, don't engage in that stuff on social media. Plenty of times I scroll past, or like Mike said, sometimes I just I just bail out because it's grieving me too much. Like, there's nothing yeah. to be gained from it. Right. And sometimes I feel duped, you know. It's like I've been on social media for 20 20 minutes looking for whatever. And I'm like, I've just wasted that time. Like there was nothing redeeming of that. So I'm out. Mm -hmm. So we're, as we try to start turning the corner to wrap up, we believe we control ourselves. We focus on Jesus in us. When's the moment that we say time out, it's time for me to make a stand here. So I thought about this a lot because coming into this, this topic, right. And um, I I was up late last night thinking about this. And um, I think, you were up late last night eating ham out of the refrigerator. Two thirty. That's when I went to bed. You you the last, I actually ate yeah. a can of spaghettios out of the can. <laughs> that was my dinner. Listen to last week's podcast as well. You'll get the whole story. Um, and it was with Frank's, by the way. Spaghettios with Frank's is the only spaghettios that exist as far as I'm concerned. Right. So, absolutely, fat boy fact: you eat a grilled cheese with it. It's way better than a tomato soup. Fat boy fact. <laughs> Look, you're making him laugh. He broke I'm, his. I'm he broke his rib ready. last week. You know? I'm seeing too many plus size vegans out there, man. What are they frying the lettuce? No, like, what the heck? Plus size vegans. Yeah. There's got to be a group They're for that on Facebook. Uh, just we exactly had, well, I don't we think got, I have it wrong. Just so we're on the we, same page. We, so, we so went the wrong so, way. But go ahead. I'm not it. conforming like, to that one. That's one thing I can tell you right, right, for. right freaking now that veganism is not on my. <laughs> So, so my question is, when do we stand up and how do we so do this, it? So this is where, so I think when you ask yourself that question, you're going back again to a place where what can I as a man do to fix it? Yeah. And that's our problem. We're not called to fix it. We're actually called to accept that person. We're supposed to call to accept them in their brokenness, every piece of that brokenness, no matter what that brokenness is and give them love. And then we have to let Jesus do the rest. It's not our job. You said it to me before. It might take you 30 years to get to where you're at. Right. Right. So you may never fix all of what you did in the last 30 years before I pass away. Well, that person might not either, but we're supposed to love and accept them for it. Doesn't mean we say it's okay. Doesn't mean we condone. There's two, there's totally different things. Well, what, what about the scripture that says when you see them having bad form, I'm paraphrasing, you're supposed to let them know about the bad form. Again, you've got a holy helper inside you to guide that conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Not every time is appropriate. And if they're not there at the point in their walk where they're going to accept that conversation, then it's probably not time. And, you and that's to- the foolish quarrel that Brad was talking about a minute ago. That's not going to amount to anything. Is that is that kind of where you're going? It's where I'm going with it. I mean, you should love them, accept them, accept that person, allow them to live there, have their own personal walk with Jesus mm-hmm. and guide them. And when the time's appropriate, if it is appropriate ever, it may never be appropriate for you to have that conversation with them. Mm-hmm. You got to be wise, right? Mm-hmm. And then let God do the rest. Right. My point before he um, answered was uh, you really got to let the Holy Spirit lead you in those situations. And I, I always, I am not one to, to do anything slow. And I, I still think about the scripture in James about, you know, slow to listen, slow to speak. And um, I think when you do that, when you listen and let the Holy Spirit guide you what you're going to do, that's working a lot better for me <laughs> lately. Yeah. You look at the writings of Paul and, you know, his letters back to the church had a lot of correcting, Mm -hmm. but he was talking more about law versus faith and um, how the Jews or the Gentiles were trying to insert some something other than Jesus into the message that was coming up. Um, he talked about the goddesses that were being reintroduced into Christian, you know, into the Christian norm that he preached that went against everything he preached. So he was he was correcting in a way there of, of man, stay true to the word. And if we truly tra- stay true to this word and, and um, find those 
opportunities, like Peter says, to tell someone about the hope that's inside of us, plant that seed one by one. Maybe that's the time to do it. I, you know, I'm I'm just getting tired of being looked at with funky eyes and a raised eye, uh, you know, a raised eyebrow if I disagree with what's happening. Yeah. And I should feel comfortable to be able to look at them and say, you know, I don't agree with what you're saying at all. And here's why. I'd like to know where you're coming from on it and see why you say you are what you are. Not not as a debate, just to just to get it. Because mm-hmm. I mean, I'm naive on stuff like that. Well, and, and hopefully to present your, your side of it, to present uh, the truth of God's word and say, well, this is what I believe. And this is how I believe God designed us and right. take it from there. I think, you know, what, what Jeremy said was was a key thing, too, is letting the Holy Spirit guide you um, in Proverbs, it talks about don't answer a fool according to his folly or you will be just like him. Amen. But, yeah. then, but then, you know, so there's restraint there's there, a, there, right? Yeah. So you don't have to jump into every quarrel and be like, this is. I don't have to win every battle. Right. Right. But, but then verse, the very next verse says, answer a fool according to his folly or he will be wise in his own eyes. So there's a time too. There's a time too. Where you may need to speak up. But so, I mean, hopefully by us having this discussion, people can think about that, pray about it, wrestle with it and, and think about, okay, I'm not automatically just going to start yelling if I hear something I don't agree with. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, I'm going to observe and, and ask the Holy Spirit to lead me. So hopefully there can be some wisdom right. that comes out of that. And I think it's important too that people understand that we're not just talking about a single thing here, right? No, like this, this is the this sin is a, in general, a much yeah. more a bigger topic, right? It's, yeah, it's anything bigger. that's being popularized that takes you away from, from God. Idolatry is a big one. We haven't even talked about that yet. Like how many idols are given to you in your daily life now that, and we're not talking about like figurines here that people worship at an altar, right? We're talking about other idols, right? So for the person that doesn't understand that an idol can be anything that takes you away from God. So whatever you put in front of him, right? On the priority list. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, there is a time and a place to address those things, right? But it's the person has to be ready and that's that's Jesus's job. And if they never get ready, it's just, he's already washed them clean for their past, future and for present sins. I mean, so if they accept him. If they accept him, yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, cool. Don't be conformed, guys. Yeah. Just be transformed by the renewing. Be transformed as your mind renews. You know, the scales are still on so many eyes out there. You know, they just, they're just they on, they're, they're still on so many eyes. And we can make a difference. Just one guy at a time, just getting to think a little bit differently about one of, one of my, my biggest things is reacting to my feelings. How many times do we do that? And we get ourselves in trouble when we do that. We, you know, mm-hmm. instead of letting, leaning into Jesus when we're feeling anger or guilt or shame or whatever and, 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 and reacting. And a lot of these things that people are putting on our kids in school or putting on us at the workplace and making us do and all that stuff that we believe goes against here will generate a feeling. And the last thing you want to do is have a Lowe's incident <laughs> and, right. or, uh, you know, um, yeah. uh, uh, and, and letting those feelings dictate how you react to things. So it's always got to be Jesus that, uh, that you do. So how do you deal with the militant? Cause there, there are people that are militant over things that that's, uh, that's a, key question there's there's a couple of guys that i watch their videos and he, he you know one of them is a young guy first name's charlie <laughs> um but he goes to these campuses with the turning point message and he listens to them intently he is smart smarter than i'll ever be and knows how to but he listens to them intently and then he answers them according to his core beliefs without batting an eye and if it, the volume keeps getting ratcheted up he has a way of asking them questions for them to clarify and most of the time they can't go back down to clarify they they, they don't know where their belief basis started then they get more frustrated and he smiles at them and we got a company coming in. Uh-oh. So, company um, in the green room. Company in the green room. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or not. No. I and I, what made me think was, how did Jesus react to the militants? So if I could be more like him in those situations, which is very hard for do, hard to do for me. Right. You know that. That would go a long way in dealing with those situations. He, he, asked, he asked a lot of questions. Yeah. He reframed things. He always, before his crucifixion, it was always about the law says this. So what do you say mm-hmm. about the law that you're preaching? You know, well, and he, we he, put him on the spot. He didn't panic. Like he didn't, he didn't get emotional. Never. He didn't freak out. He was in control because he knew the truth. Right. I mean, we have, we have the truth. Right. In, in the word of God. So we, the more we know that, the more I think we can discuss with somebody what we believe and have confidence that it's the truth. Right. Well, I think that's, you're going to come down. So what advice do you give will be one of your next questions. And that's one yeah. of the biggest things that you have to do is, is don't go into the battle unprepared, right? Mm. 
study, understand, like take a stance because you're you're knowledgeable on it. Understand exactly what you're going to say to that person, why you're going to say to that person, but also where is that coming from? It has to come from a place of love. Exactly. A place of accepting the person and the fact that they're broken, but also <laughs> I'm doing the tapping thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a place of love, most right. of all, right? Yep. It doesn't mean we accept the sin. There's a difference of accepting a person and not accepting their sin. Right. And that's the, I think that if you come from a place of love and openness, but you have to get them open to it too. If they won't be open to the conversation, that's the fool. Right. Then don't have it. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's just, it's yeah. just wasted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to pick your battles. You got to know when to walk away and you got to go, but always stand up for the truth. And sometimes that's hard for, I'm no theologian. We're just, mm-hmm. we're just four Joes around the, around the table. And I've had it blow up in my face when I've, tried to be confrontational with, oh yeah, but the Bible says this. person has no clue what the Bible even says in it, right. you know? So I'm not going to win. There's no battle to be won there because they have no clue. Who do you think on earth knows <laughs> the Bible the best? It's going to be the guy that's going to twist it right against you, yeah. right? And uh, oftentimes so. I mean, the enemy knows the Bible better than I'll ever know it. Right. So he knows exactly how to use it against me. So you got to be careful. You go into it, be prepared. Right. Well, guys, we appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, just with just the plethora of of signals that enter our brains every day and the messages that are given to us by media social media the messages our kids are getting it it uh, it's it can be overwhelming mm-hmm. and um we'll go around the table with that thought um just a closing thought from each guy with those overwhelming things that are that are coming at us every day that aren't what we know is the truth in this book. What do you got to say to a new Christian or someone that's really pondering what they're watching or what they're hearing or what they're seeing? Is it truth or not? I guess I would just go back to be confident that you know the truth and that you have access to it. I think a lot of these other, a lot of these other people, they're, you know, some of these are new ideas. Some of them are just things are, it's almost like they're throwing it up against the wall to see if it'll stick. Right. If it's popular enough, then that's the new truth. Right. But we know the real truth and it's unchanged for thousands of years. Our stance and our beliefs have, are unwavered. And you look at yeah. some of the nonsense going on in the world. Yeah. The, it, I mean, those people are blown about. They're like no anchor. They are no just, they're, they're, they're just flopping around in the wind. And, yeah. and, and so we can be confident that we have truth, that we have an anchor that, that grounds us. And so we can approach that with confidence, being calm, confident, and, and just, you know, go into it prayerfully. Good. I'm going to go back to, to James and the kind of misquoted it early, but qualities needed in trials so then my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath so i think if we can use that in those situations as a new believer as an old believer doesn't matter mm-hmm. um that can go a long way and gotcha. i am learning it daily yeah but you bro you know, I think mine would be visit us at impact.com.org. Impactministries.org yeah. and PACDministries.org. Cool. And I'm not, I'm not saying that as a plug. I'm saying it because it's a great resource to come get help and get from a place of loving and caring and a group of guys that truly want to walk and talk with you, talk you through that subject and that can help you. And if you don't have that person in your life, we're a resource. So come come use us because we want to be used. If you do have that resource, use it. You know, yeah. if you do have that guy, use them. That's what we're here for. I mean, these are the conversations we have all the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not just for, it's not just for the microphones. Right. We're having these conversations daily um, about these things that just really tug at our hearts and our world and what our children are look, looking at down the pike and whatnot. Right. I mean, that was the whole purpose of how this got started. We're like, hey, other people need to, know right. that, to have these conversations. Right. My uh, my just quick word is this. God has never, ever, ever changed. Mm-hmm. We cannot even think our culture is going to change him or he's going to adjust and adapt to us. He is 10 million steps in front of us right now. He knows of all this crap that is happening and his plan is never wavered. It is the blood of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus and your belief in it. And like like Jeremy says, before you believe you are a homosexual, you are an adulterer, you are a thief, you, you know, you, 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 all of those sins, you are a liar, you know, all of those sins, you are that until the day that you believe. And, um, so God has never, ever changed. So, uh, we think that's a good one, Trey. He's never changed. And, um, the plan has always been the blood of Christ on the cross. Nothing else, period. It's that simple. But speaking of changing, before we wrap up, I'd like to welcome Who Pig Suey. The, uh, the state of Arkansas now is listening in to us. <laughs> Razorbacks. Suey. So, and I'm going to ask for y'all's help. If you like our show and you like the podcast and you have a friend in one of these states, y'all ready? Yeah. Alaska, Hawaii, 
Utah, Wyoming, North and South Dakota, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. If you have a friend in one of those states, forward our link to them because we want to be listened to in every state in the country. And those are the states. That's all that, we got left. That's all we got left, Sweet. man. We just yeah. got those left. Fifteen that's month it. podcasts in all fifty states. And, and, yeah, but in and somewhere in Uruguay, co- seventeen and, countries, by the way. Nice. Couple of so states. we're continuing to grow. Just cool. to just to give you a, a just a, a for instance, and, and we are way over time. And Tim, you're going to have a fun time cutting this down. You know, we, I broke the grace for man podcast yesterday morning on divorce and by eight o'clock in the morning I already had a couple of messages of people that had listened to Trey I'm going through this now this might be the most important thing I've ever heard mm-hmm. not that I gave any great testimony I just gave my story mm-hmm. and I gave them a ray of hope and you know some of the stuff came from you Michael that I that, that I talked about and um, so just one man at a time guys that's all we're trying to do so right. follow us at Impact Men's Ministries please if you want to partner with us give to us to help us continue this podcast just go to the give page on the website. We would love to get your recording donation. And my master Brad over there is wearing the impact t-shirt with pride and you can't see it, but it is, it makes me like a stud. Oh, yeah. It does. It's the gun show. Look at the gun show. Man. <laughs> it's going good. But anyway, thanks for so much for uh, tuning in. We will catch everybody next week on the Cousin Christians. I'm Trey. I'm Michael. I'm Brad. I'm Jim. We are the Cousin Christians. Yeah. We out. So you, got, you guys going to join the Plus Size Vegan Facebook group? The Plus. <laughs> I will join it just to make fun of those people. Yeah. Fun. I'll find you on it. Uh...